Stampers, Deb Valder here, your fun Stampers Journey Coach. And today I'm going to show you another fall card. I love the stamp set, which we're going to use. It's called Autumn Days. I use this a lot. It's just a very realistic, gorgeous stamp set. And it's got the coordinating dies to go along with it. We don't need the dies today, but we are going to use the um, large leaf from the stamp set. So let's get started. I'm going to bring in my scrap paper here. And we'll begin. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is to um, do our background. So I'm gonna grab my buttercream uh, cardstock along with my oatmeal cookie and this stamp set, which I've been using a lot for my holiday cards. This is vintage notes, so in my classes I've been using this a lot. But it's just a very vintage looking stamp. I love the realistic um, rustic look on it. Just love it. So that's the stamp set we're using also. So let's ink up the background. And you know I always take the ink to the stamp on this one. I'm going to tell you right now, I do not know what is right side up and upside down on this one because I am not a music major. All right, so I'm just going to take and throw my cardstock on here like this. I'm going to take my scrap paper, put it over the top. Remember to use the flat of your hand when you're doing background stamps. You want a nice, even coat. All right, and then there's one. Of course, I can't just do one. Double duty Deb, that's me. All right, so we're getting that all inked up. We're gonna add our buttercream cardstock. Scrap paper, flat of your hand. Remember the flat of your hand. All right, so there's my scrap paper. Lift that up and we're done with our background. Now, what I'm gonna do with my oatmeal cookie to make it look even more rustic is to just take this and kind of go over it with the stamp pad around the edges. You see how I'm kind of making it go in a little bit? It just makes it look a little bit more vintagey. All right, all right, so there's that one. Let's do this one. And then I'm gonna try to figure out what is upside down and what is right side up because some of these notes are going upside down. Some of them are going right side up. All right, so that's our oatmeal cookie. Background is done. Um, now what we need to do is to stamp our, our leaves. And this is the cool part about this. You've seen me before do the rainbow technique. I'm gonna take a plate. I'm gonna take some baby wipes. Now I let my baby wipes dry out because our inks are not water soluble. So um, I just like to have them dried out. So these are dried out baby wipes, but I, I guess you could use them wet, I'm not sure. Um, I've just always used them dried out. So I have my baby wipes down there. I'm gonna take my blender, or my fusion blender, and I'm gonna sprinkle that on first, okay? Just, you don't have to put a whole lot on, but this is what's gonna make your um, ink disperse a little bit, all right? So let's start with the um, oatmeal cookie. I would like to start with the lighter color, all right? And that's gonna pick up our background. And this is our lighter color. Remember, um, our inks dry a little bit lighter also, so when you're, you're putting your colors on, you want, you want that to be um, prevalent, all right? Then I'm gonna take some Tangerine Fusion, put some of that on there. And this is way more than I need, but I just kinda wanna show you um, how pretty it is. And like I said, this will be good for days. And then I'm gonna take some, uh, let's see, some, Hazelnut, because that's gonna pick up the base card. All right, so I'm gonna take my hazelnut and put that in there. All right, now you don't have to fill in all the spots because it will fill in itself and we're gonna actually work it with our stamp. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is grab my, my leaf stamp and just start picking up the color. Now remember, this does dry lighter, okay? So what I'm doing here is um, just picking up the stamp color and then just gonna Stamp it down. Alrighty, so let's go this way. And I'll put a big one right here. Alright, and then maybe one more right up here. Alright, isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. Alright, let's do the same thing to this one. Right here, I'm going to go one. Two, three, and let's see, let's go right about here. Ah, 
you can you can do as many or as little as you want but like I said oh I'm getting it all over me um, so you can do as much or as little as you want and it is just an amazing little technique now I'm going to show you something else all right let me just get this off my fingers here all right before it dries onto my fingers because then I'll have chocolate co covered fingers all right Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back in and, well, first of all, I have to cut my, um, let me just show you, I have to cut my uh, labels. And what I did that with is my little amaze machine and I need um, my steel wool die and some scrap paper. So, whoops, I don't need the magnetic plate though. Alright, so I'm going to grab this. My steel rule die is right here, and I'm only going to use these two. So, let's put those down. Yeah, I can cut up to like four sheets of paper on this. I, I think that's what I have here too. So, I'm going to show you. With steel rule dies, you can cut more because they are just awesome. So, we're going to take and put down the bottom plate, and then the steel rule die, our paper, and then the big plate. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to run it through the Amaze machine. So, I'm just going to take and run this right through. Cracking sounds are um, supposed to be. And here we have our tags. Okay, there we go. And you see how many that I made? Let's get these out of the way. So this is the steel rule die right here. And um, let me just show you. All right, so this is the this is the tag set. Um, three different size tags. So if you do a lot of tags, steel rule dies are awesome for that because you can make a whole lot at once. So let's just kind of get rid of our, our scraps, all right, which I cut these from scraps, all right? I need these two right here. And the rest I put in a little pouch and I use them at different times, all right? So here's this one and this one. So I have all these extra little tags that I can use for another project. If you're gonna do something, make sure you take and you, you utilize your time, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna do something really cool. We're going to take this and we're going to put it onto our, let me just show you the card so you can see what it looks like, all right? We're going to take this and we're just going to just plop it down just like that, all right? Let's see how that came out. Oh, beautiful, but I want a little bit more on the one side, so I'm going to go right over here and add a little bit more. Perfect. Now, what's going to happen is this is going to dry and it's going to dry lighter. So I'm going to try to put the rest of my card together while this is drying because I don't want it to be too wet. Um, but it just gives that awesome look right there. All right. So now let's start putting our card together. I'm going to take my card base, which is right here. Now remember, these are the ones that we just did. That's the one that's drying. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my card base. I'm going to add some Journey Foam Squares to this. I think I'll just use the little guys because, um, you know me, I always save paper. So this is done with the Journey Rectangles, but you can also do it with your cutter, with your Journey cutter, and um, it's very easy. You've seen me do it so many different times um, on camera. So, um, yeah, just save yourself some paper, and then you can use that as a, another layer, which is totally awesome. Now the other thing with these is you don't have to take all of these off. Some of them are just for, um, you know, um, just so that it doesn't sag in. So I'm not taking them all off. Well, maybe I did, but you don't have to. Okay. All right. So that's going to be popped up. Um, so I'm going to put this here just like that. Now you're, you're probably screaming, no, you didn't put the, the string around. Well, watch what I'm going to do. All right. I like doing it this way because I can. Okay, let's see. I got one of those little things on my finger. Alrighty, so there's that. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Journey Twine and add that two times. Okay, and then after I add that, I'm going to add my... You want to get that close to the edge? slide that right in there like that. Okay. Center. And we're good to go. Okay. So there's that part of it right there. Now, let's see if this is dry. It's still quite a bit wet. Um, I'm going to try it. Even though it is wet, I'm going to try a couple different things. All right. So the first thing I need to do is to add my bronze silk. 
because that just makes it pop even more. And that's got to dry also. So, while that's drying, I'm going to take and put some Easy Glide on here. Glue this to this. Now, you probably should wait until this dries, but I really want to finish this up to show you how awesome this card is. Now, I'm going to take a chance. This is still wet, but I'm going to take a chance, and I'm going to grab my saying... All right, and I'm using the one, um, this is a really neat set too. It's called Rock Notes, and um, I'm going to use You Are Awesome. Could be Happy Birthday, could be Notes, it could be, it's a date. <laughs> um, and then I'm just going to take my black licorice ink. There's nothing like red rubber stamps. I love, I always test it out. Okay, good. Oh, look at that. Awesome. Our black ink is to die for. All right, and then I'm just going to take and stamp this right on the card. Oh, not bad at all. Nice job, Deb. Okay, so now we have that part of it. Again, it's wet, so I'm going to end up, because um, I'm, I'm very anxious to get this done, all right? I'm going to take this. I'm going to put on some of my Journey Foam Squares. Okay, I'm going to go with my big ones. I'm going to put those, because that'll stabilize it while we're tying our bow. All right, so just take these off, and... Decide where you want it to be placed, okay? So I want mine hanging off just a little bit. And well, let's make sure we got enough on both ends on this first, okay? So, yep, we do. All right, so now what we're going to do is add this piece right here. And that'll go underneath like that. And it's going to come up through the little hole right here. There we go. Alrighty. And then just tie your bow. You want to get it nice and close to that little hole right there. So I tied it in a knot first just to secure it. And then I'm just going to tie one bow. And because I have so much ribbon left over, I'm going to take and just pull it just a little bit bigger than there, and then take my self-sharpening, non-stick, grand pro shears, and there we have it. Now, like I said, this is gonna, this right here is gonna lighten up. It's gonna be absolutely gorgeous when it's done. Um, so you can tell right here how, how much it's lightened up already. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? So super pretty. Absolutely pretty, 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 pretty. Okay, um, I hope you like this. This is the rainbow technique. I've done several YouTube videos on this, so make sure you check out my other samples for this. And if you have any questions, just let me know. You know how to get a hold of me. You take care and have a great day.